In this video, we're going to give you the top five common trading mistakes that beginners make when they first venture into the markets. Uh, the first one, guys, we have a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. Neil and Sean with me. As always, guys, let's talk trading mistakes. The first one is a very common one that even experienced traders can catch themselves in, and that is going to be focusing on P&L and not on the proper structuring of a trade idea. Neil, give us your take on uh, how do you watch or not watch P&L first? <laughs> well, you're going to watch P&L, and that's the thing. Every trader goes through these, and that's the important thing about these mistakes. You never really eliminate them altogether. It's more about managing them. And look, you're going to look at your P&L, whether you're up 1,000 or 100,000 or down, uh, whatever that number might be. But it's about the process of your trade. Why did you get in? Why did you get out? Did you follow your rules? And, and sometimes an, an illustrative example is going to make some sense. So I'm just going to pull up a series of trades that I had uh, in this particular day on BTNR. And I was shorting. Uh, to keep it simple, I was shorting about uh, 460 off of a pre-market high at about 40, 480 at the open and a 475 level here. And then a similar trade post-halt. Uh, obviously, it was a crazy move to the upside. I'm halting a similar price with a similar entry, and down here able to get 350s, but for the most part, like 390s or so, and then the same out here in the second trade. Pino wise these would look almost exactly the same. Also, if I shorted the same price at 465 in the midst of a volatility halt to the upside, held through an upward halt, in which it goes against me another 50 pennies, but just blindly said to myself, I'm going to hang on to this baby, I got no out. It's still the same p &L winning trade. Is doing that, or the, doing these two things the same thing? Getting in after it just made a volatility move, uh, halting into the upside here, taking that risk of holding through a five minute volatility halt, is that the same as letting it open back up, fail on a break of the high, and then get back in at the, at, uh, through that low? Not the same thing at all. The risk profile is entirely different. The manner in which the stock is moving going into the trade is entirely different. Your risk level is entirely different because you don't know where this, this could, this could open up after the halt at $5.50, right? So P&L is going to show you the same trade. It's going to show you where you got in. It's going to show you where you got out. You can record that. You can be happy about your winners and, and, and your losers. But the question becomes, how did you get into that trade and why? How much did it draw down against you and why? Those are things that you have to consider as a trader when developing a strategy. You can't just simply say, ooh, I made $1 per share on the trade. In all of these inst instances, every single time you shorted in this price level, you would have had the opportunity to have that type of return. P&L will act as if it's all the same thing, vastly different each time you look at that trade from a risk perspective. And you got to think about the downside of any trade because that's part of the equation in building a strategy. Yeah, you have to be able to, to uh, separate the number value from the structure of a trade. And if the trade is still valid, you got to be able to take it uh, when it is. So number one, focusing on P&L or results over the actual process of the trade. Let's go on to number two. We're going to bring in Sean for this one. Not having an out before getting into a trade. We talk about risk all the time. So we have to start to plan our trades around where we're wrong first, Sean. Yep, uh, perfect. And, and number two, I think, uh, maybe just as important as number one, if not more important. I mean, as we go down the list, prioritize these as you see fit. But not having an out before you get into a trade. Every single trade that I get into... I have an out. I have an idea in mind where this trade needs to go in order for me to be wrong. You're, there's no way you're going to be right on every single trade. And in order to minimize the downside, again, remember, these are beginner mistakes. In order to minimize the downside, you have to have an out. And I have a perfect example here uh, today with Palantir, if I just maybe make this a little bit bigger uh, so you guys can see. We went long off the open. We saw this NASDAQ starting to go higher, higher, higher. This is into the open year. Then all of a sudden, we got a nice little crash down. Palantir follows suit. We take the long here. We know we like this stock. We like the name, okay? But we don't want to hold it into a falling market. So we take the long here at 22.10. And what we do notice is, where do we want to get out? Well, this is yesterday. So we back it out to yesterday and we see, okay, where are there some support levels? Yesterday, they were right here at 22. Even if we bring it down a little bit lower to these wicks, it's 21.90, 21.95. Point being, I take that out at 22. So we go long at 22.10. We get out on previous support levels. Now, whether or not you want to use 
a day chart, a minute chart. This happens to be a three minute chart. Just to go back and see, this is my trading style for this particular trade. We take it early. If the market continues to fall down, who knows how far, far Palantir does fall. But look, just by me getting out here, Brendan, at $22, we take that 10 cent hit, but it could have been 50 cents if we hold it all the way down to the downside. So right there, we take a bad trade, we get out, and we absorb not getting that hit. So have your outs, make sure they're reasonable, and there's a good example there on Palantir. Number two, again, not having an out before getting into your trade first. Let's keep going here. Number three, it's very easy uh, to fall into this category when you first start out trading, and that is trying too much too soon. People get focused on the dollar amount again, and when something's not working, they're very eager to jump to the next thing and then jump to the next thing and jump to the next thing, not fully understanding that the market is always changing. So we have to you know, have multiple strategies. And Neil, we'll talk to you about this one. It's so important to have multiple strategies that work for you and understand that individual strategies are not going to work all of the time. Exactly. And all experienced traders, and you'll see Sean and I on the live show, and you as well, Brendan, uh, have like three or four different styles of trades that are packed into maybe the first uh, an hour or two of the session where you're making sometimes the greater proportion of your money. And I just want to show you guys, when you're a beginner, that's not your goal. Your goal is to develop one strategy that works. Once that's effective, you work on others. You put that not on auto, autopilot, but you put that in the back burner and apply it, make your money with it, and then you sort of go from there, one, two, and three. And I'll show you an example of this because you know BlackBerry this morning, uh, there were several trades you could have had on this stock today. Now, uh, there's a gap up and then dip by into support. Yesterday, support at 925. That happens here. Uh, you have a trade that I absolutely love, which is you know that uh, the the gap up retracement trade off of a key level, a ten dollar level, and then a failure right at the open. So it fails to break up when the buying comes in, and then you fade that trade. Then there's also the retake of yesterday's high, and the pre market low, which is the one that I the one that I executed uh, here at nine sixty over and over again inside of this range. Those are all valid strategies. Those are all strategies that I put into, a, that put into effect from time to time. Trying to execute or learn all of them at once when you're just starting out and maybe you're, you're going to be thinking about you know, finding uh, one or two opportunities a, a day at best and you want to, or even your paper trading, what's going to happen to you is you're going to get information overkill. You don't have the skills yet to manage multiple positions, let alone evaluate their success. So you try to keep it to one. Once that works, apply it. Then you, you can always observe. You can always go back and back test. You can forward test. There's so many ways that you can take advantage of your time in front of the market. But first things first, like in this example here, it's okay to see an opportunity, but sit it out. Only trade the one that you're trying to focus on and perfect. And then from there, you pile on and add new strategies. And there we go. So uh, again, you have to really pay attention to not getting carried away with following the dollar amount and understand that a strategy is going to come in and out of favor many, many times during the year sometimes. So uh, just because something isn't working now doesn't mean it might not be a couple of weeks down the road. That was number three. Let's go on to number four, Sean. Testing, back testing. A lot of people are so eager to start trading that uh, they say, I don't need to test. I'll just take this to the market today. What happens then? Yeah, not good. Um, you need to be able to backtest your, your, your results and, and look to say, hey, what worked yesterday for me? What didn't, you know? And to make sure that you sort of, you know, put your trades into a compartment. You got to say, this worked for me. I traded well at the open. I traded well at the close. You know, what did I do yesterday that worked well for me? Did, was it a momentum trade? What was it? I mean, today, I'm going to go back to Ford for an example. So yesterday, we saw Ford. This is a three-minute chart. Just huge upside. We were part of this upside move there yesterday. It was investor day. We knew we wanted to be long Ford. So what we did was we just tested different breakout strategies, right? We went long at 13. Did that work? Yes. You know, did it go? Did going long at 1350 work right here? Yes, it did to the upside, right? But then it fades back in. You can't, you can't look at a trade and say, hey, you know, this breakout, I should have held it maybe all the way until the close. You got to say, where are my outs? What, you know, am I looking for a quarter on this trade? What have I actually held it 
to 14. You know, where would we be here on this kind of a trade? I think back testing very important. I noticed that yesterday. And then so today we come in basically with the same kind of a strategy. It's going to look a little silly here because it's three minutes. Maybe I can change this to a one minute quickly uh, and show you very, very fast. But I use yesterday's results to give me a trade today, right? Here's that 1450 break here happening early. What happens? It doesn't go. But we noticed that the pullback is only back down to VWAP. This is a strategy that I've tested over and over again. So when it pulls back in, that's an area of support that I'm willing to take due to the fact that I've watched this strategy, looked at it over and over again. So there's the buy, and then there's the break to the upside. Yesterday, we saw a quarter come in money uh, for us off 50 cents, so 50 cents to 75 cents. That's the high. So we get out scalping because now we have a beautiful price. But look, again, forget about what happens, and that's the point of this. Forget about the move to the upside. Yesterday, we got a quarter, remember, before it stopped. So this time, we take that same quarter again. So there's the break at 50. Testing back to VWAP, a back-tested strategy. We trust it, we go long there, and then we go back to another strategy and get out at those 75. So I think that's very, very important. Back-test your strategies. Understand where you make money because as a beginner, we go, oh, man, I just won on that. Let me try something else. Well, make sure that you have past results showing you future results. That's very important. Number four, not testing a strategy before you go live in the markets with it. And that's a great one to roll into our number five and final one. Again, the top five mistakes commonly made by beginner traders. Number five is going to be not forward testing and keeping accurate results right. as you go. So we just talked about what happens before you go live, but it's very important to continue with those records, uh, guys, as we go forward, because as we said, the market's always changing. Yeah, your, your, your work never ends. It's great to have back testing, uh, you know, to see if you should be going live with a strategy, you paper trade it. But once you go live, look, it's not, and we talk about this, and this goes back to almost uh, the first point that we made. It's not just about recording that result because it's easy enough to say, okay, so, and I'll show you the, the first example. Okay, short, 465 area, it gives, gives us the win. That trade worked, my stop was here. It ran against me X amount, it could be zero, it could be a few cents, and then the same trade, and I'm recording that uh, as if they're the same. So yes, o overall, you can track both your entry, your exit, and the amount of shares, the amount it drew down against you, where you got out of each one of these trades, um, and your percent gain, all of those things are fantastic to throw in your spreadsheet, I always like a couple of additional entries if you're keeping a journal, which beginning traders should. Consider that these may look similar, but it's a different strategy altogether. Try to separate context. Yes, you are shorting in front of resistance uh, on a second roll of, like you wanted to have failed at a particular price. One was at the open at 9.30, the other was post halt. Goes into a separate category. Similar trades, but an entirely separate category post halt make sure you try to put as much context as possible. You don't want to overdo it, but sometimes there's an obvious difference. A 9.35 trade or taking this same type of a setup at 3.55 before the close are going to be entirely different. One last thing to keep in mind, and I do this in some other trades, we'll consider it as well, uh, a trader's state of mind matters. Uh, so you can put added context in the retracting of your results, performance day-wise, day how much sleep did you get? Um, did you have anything going on in your personal life which could have affected your decision-making process? Any time you break your rules and you note, note that in your journal, look to see if there was something external about it. When you're learning, there's no such thing as too much information. Now, you can overanalyze that information, but if it's something easy that gives you some context, like here, a different style of trade altogether, don't just record the P&L. Don't just record entries and exits. Uh, also understand the concept, text, and style of trade. Breakouts aren't dip buys. Those two things are different. Same thing here. There we go, the top five beginner mistakes uh, that uh, new traders tend to make commonly when they go into the market for the first time. Guys, if you like this content, take a second, smash the like button and subscribe for more great videos to come. Let's go to Valeria. Hey guys, thank you for this helpful information. Dear viewers, please subscribe to this channel to see more great videos.